Hi everybody, Dr. Zach here. I just wanted to take a little bit of time today and check in with everybody, see how you're doing, make sure that everybody's still navigating through uh, 2020, uh, doing as well as you possibly can. I know that uh, coming off of some of the, the events of uh, the last several days, we had uh, the tragic incidents with uh, um, the young man that was killed by the police officer in uh, Minnesota. And uh, just a tragic deal. And yeah, I hope that justice comes from that situation. Right now we're in the middle, even here in Denver, of riots and curfews and so forth that's going on. Just There's a darkness that's just settled down over the land. There's um, a lot of confusion. Uh, a lot of people are wondering, you know, is justice going to happen and what that's going to look like. And, and so it's real easy, especially in this season that we've been going through where there's a lot of uncertainty and there's a lot of frustration for us to really end up with our minds going to a dark place. And uh, you know, with the last several uh, videos that I've shot, I've really talked about taking control of our thoughts and trying to, to lead them into a positive direction and make sure that we're turning our focus onto something that is better. And I wanna continue with that because I think that it's really important for us to see as we're heading into summertime now and we're looking at you know how do things look going forward? What does the next chapter of life look like? What can we be preparing for? Um, in a positive way to make things change. And I wanted to bring up some research that I've been going through and looking at. And I want to kind of lead into it with this, this concept. You know, if, if we say, say that I'm a weatherman and I'm predicting that uh, we've got this major winter storm coming in, and it's just going to be the storm of all storms, and we're going to expect all kinds of frigid temperatures that's going to last for weeks on end and lots of snow, and we're going to get buried. And so we really need to take some time and prepare our homes, prepare our, our families, you know, hunker down, get all the gear that we need so that we can weather this storm and we get all geared up for it. And a few days into this, we, we look outside and we go, I, I don't see the storm happening. So we dig a little bit deeper, we look around a little bit more and we, we still don't see the, the storm happening. Um, but we turn on the news and, and the, the experts who predicted the storm tell us, Man, you got to just stick with it. You got to keep doing what you're doing, and and it may not look as bad as we thought it was going to be. But man, there's there's another wave coming. You got to get prepared for it. How long do we stay hunkered down when we look around and we see outside that this storm that has been predicted that is is supposed to be cataclysmic isn't showing up the way that it should? And I want to give you some research. I don't want to take and minimize this whole COVID nineteen situation as far as those people whose lives have been impacted, because every single life makes a difference. But here's what we do know, is we know that the people that are at risk are the people that are at risk for anything. That's gonna be the flu, that's gonna be pneumonia, that's gonna be really any kind of a health challenge that's going on because they're already at a place of risk in that. But if we take a look at this, here's a, a report that comes um, out of the research that was done by Stanford researchers. And this is where they took and they looked at the numbers that were coming through and they realized that between 28 and 55 times as many people had been affected as they originally thought. So here's what that tells us is that it, it went way faster. It spread way faster than we ever anticipated. 28 to 55 times faster. So if this is really as virulent and, and, and deadly as they say that it would, we'd be looking at 28 to 55 times, not percent, times more deaths, more casualties, more problems going on. They predicted that it was going to be a roughly 3.4% mortality rate. So basically three out of 100, three and a half out of 100 people that got it would die. What they're seeing now with the research that's come in is not only is it spread faster, but we're seeing between 0.1 and 0.2%. So we're not talking, you know, from three and a half percent to one and a half percent. We're seeing three and a half percent to 0.1% to 0.2%. So we're talking a fraction of the deaths that, that they were initially anticipating. So with that said, again, it's not to minimize every single one of those deaths, but it's, it's basically saying, hey, you know what, we made these predictions because we thought it was gonna kill this many people and be this deadly, but it's not. So then we look around again and we say, okay, well, what else do we see happening? Right now out of Oxford, I think I alluded to this story last week where the drug companies are super, super concerned because they see the cases of COVID dropping so dramatically and they're afraid that it's going to go away before they get a vaccine that comes out. Now, here's the disturbing part of that is they're counting on this disease, keeping us sick longer so that they can get a vaccine that comes out so they can make tens of billions of dollars of profit on a vaccine. 
and they're super disappointed that we're getting well too fast. Here's the problem, is that we're getting well too fast. That's not a problem. If you remember the very first video I shot, I said, guess what? They found a cure. The cure is inside of us. The cure is our body creating antibodies to, to fight off this, this infection and us having a 99 point plus percent survival rate from COVID-19. So here's what we're seeing is that a lot more people got it than we thought, which means that the flattening the curve didn't work the way we wanted it. We see that it's not nearly as deadly as we thought. We see that we're getting past the curve a whole lot quicker than we thought. And yet we still listen to the experts that are saying, oh, hang in there, hunker down. We've got a lot of, of you know, the second wave is coming and we have these issues going on. So we're still living in this place of fear. You know, we, we're, we're now no longer stay at home or restricted. Now we're safer at home, right? We had a few more things that we can be doing, but we can't go outside without putting on a mask and we can't gather with more than 10 people. We still have to maintain social distancing. We still have to, you know, we're still under this lockdown mentality because we're still afraid of this thing. When if you look outside, you go, I don't see the storm. Again, not that there hasn't been some people that have died, and, and there have been. But a lot of these people would have been dead from something else anyway. In fact, Dr. Ferguson, who comes out of the Imperial College in, of, of UK, who predicted 2.2 million deaths in the United States, 500,000 deaths in the UK. And after his numbers started coming back far, far lower than that, he basically said, yeah, we missed the mark. It's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. It's kind of like a bad flu season. And he said, you know what? In the UK, instead of 500,000 deaths, we're looking at probably 20,000 deaths. And of those 20,000, 10,000 of those people would have been dead by the end of the year anyway. Again, not to minimize the, the pain that impact that that has. But the bottom line is that you and I, we both have a 100% chance of dying at some point. We don't want to die prematurely. We want to take and look around us and make sure that we're living the best we can under the circumstances. And if we start looking at all of the research that's coming in, we're seeing this, this storm that has been predicted isn't the storm that they anticipated. And so from my perspective is maybe it's time that we start listening to different experts. Maybe it's time we just acknowledge that, hey, you know what? We did better on this thing than we thought. And let's see what we can do to make this next season the best season of our life. So here's the strategy that we have for this. How do you make the rest of your life the best of your life? You do it by choosing to focus on the right things. You do it by choosing to put the right food into your body, the right fuels into your body, the right food into your brain and your mindset. You do it by getting movement, exercise, staying active. You do it by being social, hanging out with the people that feed you and fuel you and get you excited about life, by doing the activities that you love to do and by determining that, thank God, we made it through this, this COVID-19. It wasn't as bad. Thank God it wasn't as bad as it was. Now let's get, get back to the bigger and better life. Let's engage in life. Let's get past the fear. Let's celebrate that we're stronger than we thought we were, that we've, we've endured another end of the world crisis and just put another notch on the belt that, hey, that's like the 10th one for me, right, that I've made it through. Um, and just to continue to move forward, look for opportunities to share truth and hope and to focus on the good things that are going on. And with that, you know, be praying for police officers and for people of color and for everybody that's going on that's going through hard times, people that are dealing with health situations, people that are dealing with financial situations, loss of work, all of these things, be praying for them. Send out some positive thoughts their direction. Um, but start living life to the full again. It's time for us to re-engage. Um, so with that, hopefully I'll give you some food for thought, some things to think about, some positive stuff for you to chew on. Uh, until next time, this is Dr. Zach. God bless you guys.